What It Do World. It's your boy Gianni Styles, and this is the first episode of The Kickback. And today on The Kickback, we got a special guest. We're going to be talking to none other than Deneen Glenn from Chicago, Illinois. And recently, uh, Michelle Obama came out with a book, and basically she mentioned her. They grew up back in the day, day. so we're going to be talking with Deneen Glenn about that. And so I just felt like it was only right to call this title of this episode Becoming Deneen. So we'll be talking to Deneen about that and other things that she's doing in her life, you know, since the Michelle experience. So, you know what I'm saying? Stay tuned for that. That's coming up next. But before that comes up, we got a song for you guys. Yeah. Goes by the name Michelle out of Ohio. She submitted her song. And man, it's a banger. So I'm going to let that speak for itself. It's called Show Me. Check that out. And when we come back, we got Deneen Glenn in the building. Yeah. Welcome to the Kickback. This is your girl, Renee Lachey, and we got Gianni Styles in the building. Yeah, yeah. And today for our first guest, we have Deneen Glenn. Welcome, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, uh, No problem. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Deneen. 
Well, my name is Denise Glenn. I grew up uh, here in the city of Chicago, born and raised. Um, I uh, went to um, O'Keefe Grammar School. I went to Harvard High School, and from there, I went to Pivot Point Beauty School. I also have a bachelor's degree of theology, and now I'm currently um, doing um, a charm school for girls. Okay, great, great, great. Uh, recently, Michelle Obama uh, came out with a book called Becoming Michelle, and you know, I had to uh, cop that, you know, via Amazon. But uh, yeah, I was reading um, one of the chapters, and in that chapter, uh, she uh, mentioned a girl named Dee Dee, and uh, she said basically that Dee Dee always used to mean look her as she passed by. She said Dee Dee sat on her family's stoop next to another more popular girl named Deneen. She says Deneen was always friendly, but Dee Dee didn't seem to like her very much. Now, the question that everybody's been waiting for, Deneen, tell us, is this you she's talking about? And also, can you remember uh, anything about her or her brother? Okay, yes. First, I can start off by answering um, my encounter with uh, Michelle and her brother, Craig. Um, Actually, I met uh, them back in the day when we were little. Um, I would say maybe around nine years old. Um, Michelle actually didn't really come outside that much, but her brother Craig did. And when they um, moved around us, I can't really recall the story or the instance why they moved around us because it was so long ago. (laughs) But as I told you guys, um, I remember meeting her and her brother and um, they said, um, I think it may have been like a fire or something like that. So I used to live on 70th and Paxton and they, their, them and their family, they moved uh, in the building that was right next to ours, but it was like uh, a temporary housing for them because I'm not for certain if it was a fire where they lived or something was being remodeled, but they were only going to be there for a short time. So they were only there during the summer months. And after that, just as quickly as they came, they left. So that was my brief encounter uh, meeting Michelle and her brother. And like I said, Michelle, she, um, she barely came out, but Craig, he was kind of popular. He came out a lot. And we we uh, knew him and uh, one of my friends, Karen, she had like a little crush on him. So that's why I really, really remember them from that instance. But Michelle, she she was very a very nice girl. So for me to say that I'm the Denise that um, she's talking about in this instance, I'm not for certain. Uh, she would have to be the one to answer that. Only thing I can contest to that I do recall meeting her when I was younger. Oh, okay. So you guys weren't like best friends or anything like that? No. So when you, oh, okay. when you actually read her book and you saw your name in the book and you knew that you met her when you were younger, how did that make you feel? Okay. For Well, first of all, I didn't read it first. Um one of my nieces, uh, Darnisha, was reading a book, Mm -hmm. and she called me. She said, Denise, she said, I think Michelle talking about you in her book. I said, girl, get out of here. I said, what are you talking about? She said, no, 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 I'm serious. She said, I'm reading her book, and remember you told us you met her when you was little? I was like, yeah. And so she was like, well, she talked about meeting a girl named Deneen and a girl named Dee Dee. She said, do you know a girl named Dee Dee? I said, yeah, that was my next door neighbor. She said, well, I said, well, read me what exactly she said, because at that time I didn't have a book. So Mm -hmm. I didn't know what Michelle said in her book. And um, yeah, and so when she talked about the chain of events as far as uh, Dee Dee being mean to her and then they had a fight, Honestly, I can say I don't remember that. That's why I can't really say that it was me. Um, it could have okay, been cool. another Denine that she met when she, you know, wherever she lived, mm-hmm. which was on the other side. Like we lived, I lived on one side of 71st and uh, they lived on the other side of 71st Street. So 
when I did get the book and I read where she said she lived, she actually lived on the other side. So it could very well have been another Denise because when I was in grammar school during that time, it was two other Denise in school with me. So, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, uh, but you still met her. So, I mean, it could be. <laughs> Right. And, and uh, Renee Lachey just asked me, how did it make me feel? Hon- honestly, I can uh, elaborate on that. I felt kind of like, well, if I am the Denise, that's an honor to have been remembered. You know what I'm saying? Right. By Michelle Obama. So it's an honor. If it is me, I'm, I'm truly honored. And if it's not, Whoever the Janine is, she should be totally honored, right? <laughs> All right. So, uh, growing up in the South Shore area around that time, tell us, Denise, how did people view that area, or how was it at that time growing up? Well, honestly, I was a kid, so the way I viewed it, I thought it was a great place to grow up because I lived uh, near the beach, and um, mm-hmm. that's where we used to go a lot. We would go bike riding on, um, uh, take um, our bikes up to the bike path, which was on South Shore Drive, and we would ride our bikes, or we would go to the South Shore uh, Country Club, which is what it was called back then. And um, I honestly can remember being around in 1973 when um, they opened it up to the public, because before it was like a po- uh, a private club, the cultural center was. And uh, you couldn't just go there. And uh, they opened it up for a Halloween party. So I remember a lot of us went. My aunt Helen took us up there. So I had a really good time. And my childhood was really, really nice growing up over there. I would say it was kind of like middle class, you know, Chicagoans, parents that work, you know. And uh, the schools were good. We went to a good school. And it was just a good time, I would say, during the 70s which is when I was growing up. <laughs> hmm, okay. Cool. So, um, what high school did you go to? Um, from there, I uh, when I graduated from grammar school, which was O'Keefe, um, in 1979, I then went off to uh, Carver Area High, which was located, uh, and it's still out there, it's located in Algier Gardens. Um, I didn't live out there. But uh, the reason my sister and myself, uh, we ended up there was because uh, Dr. Larry Hawkins was real good friends with my dad. And uh, they had um, an upper, bra- uh, upper bound program out at Carver. And he got my sister and I into that program. And so we went to Carver because they had a lot of good um, elective classes to take. So it was a real good experience. So I went to Carver High. Yeah, I heard that school was really good back in the day. They had, um, like, if you wanted to be a cosmetologist, they had that. If you wanted to be a mechanic, they had Mm -hmm. that on that. Did you take up any of those classes in high school? Uh, No, I actually did not. I I took uh, business classes during that time because I thought I wanted to – be a court reporter so I took like a lot of business classes as far as like typing I took accounting which right now I'm using those skills now (laughs) but uh no I didn't um take cosmetology I didn't go to cosmetology until after I graduated I went to pivot point so what you uh, want to start doing here (sighs) oh that's kind of a long story (laughs) Um, what made me decide um, that I wanted to do hair was I recall uh, getting my hair done when I was a junior in high school by my cousin, my father's cousin. Um, her name is Kalila. We call her Lulu. She lived um, and she still lives in Grand Rapids, but she would come to Chicago to do everybody's hair. And back then, the curl was popular. If you had like a carefree curl, Jerry curl, leisure curl, any of those type of curls, you was, you know, had it going on. So she came and she did our hair. And it wasn't until I was sitting in her chair and I was just sitting there getting my hair done and I had my eyes closed and I can just recall just meditating on everything she was doing. Mm-hmm. And so I'll make a long story short, you know, 
uh, she went back home and um, we didn't have anybody to do our hair. And I recall telling my mom that I know how to do this curl. I said, mom, I know how to do it. She said, Danine, you don't know how to do hair. I said, no, I, but I do. <laughs> and I told my mom, I said, I said she used her um, rearranger first, then the curl, she rinsed that out and then did the curl booster then left that out on for a period of time and then the neutralizer and after that she rinsed it and and, and took the rollers out and we had a curl so my mom needless to say she went and brought the stuff and i did hair and been doing hair ever since oh wow that's yeah that's amazing i know right so, so I did everybody's hair <laughs> oh okay so i i heard you earlier say that you um have a charm school can you um elaborate on that? Sure. Um, our Charm School Academy, honestly, um, it's called Just Girl Charm School Academy. It was uh, birthed in me uh, when I was working in ministry. I used to uh, uh, work at um, uh, Renewing the Mind Ministry. Mm-hmm. And um, God had <laughs> given me um, this this workshop for girls and um that's when it came about and it's called just girl and acronym stands for jesus's upright servants trusting god's irreplaceable righteous love towards servanthood and um basically what that means is that god wants us to teach young ladies how to be ladies and um you know being a positive role model in their lives and teaching them that they their self worth and empowering them to be leaders in society. So the Just Girl Charm School Academy is a place where we focus on excellence and grace, from etiquette to social skills, through the empowerment of workshops, and it's for girls between the ages of six to twelve. Hmm. Wow, that's good. That's something that Chicago definitely needs. Right. Yeah, it's just yeah. wild people out there. You know, um, be, Chicago at one point was they called it the murder capital of right. the world. Yeah. You know? and um, you know now they call it Chirac. Is mm-hmm. it still you know crazy out there? Have you ever? encounter anything you know robberies or ever feel feared for your life well let me just say this um by being the murder capital honestly i didn't know it was the murder capital of the united states however it is a lot that goes on just like uh the other day when i was coming home from work um i live near 47th street (laughs) near king drive and it was um, a big shooting over there. And I basically walked right past this. So, yeah, when they call it Chirac, I mean, it's it's a lot that goes on here in Chicago. However, it's a lot of great things here in Chicago. We don't always want to, like, focus on the negativity because I believe that when you are a child of God and that you are... Um, live your life according to God's standards, we cannot walk or operate in a spirit of fear. We have to um, walk in confidence and strength. So with that being said, I don't look at Chicago as like the murder capital. I don't, I wouldn't say that it's norm, but it's our norm. But you have to learn how to live and how to survive without um, surviving in fear. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Right. So um, with that being said, I want to say that there's a lot of good things here in Chicago, like um, the downtown area um, and the inner city areas. There's a lot of things that are going on that are positive, And we kind of sometimes want to focus on those things because those things are that are the things of God. When we focus on the uh, negativity of Chicago, it kind of brings you down. But you always want to come up with a solution. You know, if you're not a part of the problem, then be a part of the solution. And so one of the solutions is having the empowerment group for girls to teach them that there is another way. You know what I'm saying? So we don't want to be judgmental toward young ladies or young men. We just want to be the solution. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So you want to be 
a solution solver. And so I think that if everybody would do their part, because it definitely takes a village, then I think Chicago can be a great place again to live in. So um, how long have you been practicing your faith and what made you want to get your uh, bachelor's in theology? What does that mean to you? Well, I've been um, a Christian as far as practicing my faith. Um maybe 15 years now I'm not certain how long it's been but what made me want to get a degree in theology is because I was I would say I was attracted to the word of God I was attracted to learning more of God and so I I thirst after God and I just wanted to be wherever God was I just wanted to learn more and grow in him and I found it very beneficial during those days that I was in theology school. And uh, I would say that I mentored a lot of young ladies, um, whether they were nieces or friends or young ladies that have worked with me at the hair salon. I would say that I tried to be a positive role model in their lives, to be somebody or a sound board for them that they can um, come to in confidence and I can kind of steer them on the right direction. And not only young girls, I've had a lot of clients that have sat in my seat and, you know, basically helped to steer in the right direction, whether it was prayer or whether it was words of encouragement or something that would empower them to, to do their best. So with that being said, um, those are some of the outcomes of me going to theology school and getting a degree and working in ministry. Mm, okay. And that, that kind of falls hand in hand with your um, Just Girls, too. Yeah, with the Tarim School of Cat. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's great. I think you're doing a wonderful job. This is, um, does anybody, do you, did you have, do you have a lot of students? Um, how can, can you, do you have a website? Okay, well, as far as like having a lot of students, we do like workshops. We want to call it workshops. Mm-hmm. And what the workshops, they last for like six weeks or I can do a one day workshop. Like if somebody wants to book me or whatever, they can find me on my Instagram page or my uh, Facebook page, which is Just Girl Charm School Academy or JGCSA, which stands for School Academy. And um, my contact number is 855-905-1535. And as I stated, we uh, we focus on excellence and grace um, from etiquette to social skills. So we teach them poise. We teach them uh, good manners. We teach them about bullying, how to handle certain situations how to act like a lady and be a lady and how to respond in certain situations. So those are some of the things that they can learn. And then we also do it in in an innovative way Uh, by me being a cosmetologist. I have a passion for pampering girls. So we kind of do like spa parties and Mm -hmm. sleepovers, things like that. So I kind of make it fun for them. And so if anybody is out there, they have any young girls in between those ages, uh, we can accommodate them and um, sponsor birthday parties or group parties or um, what, whatever the occasion is. Nothing to be able to. Okay, cool. So um, what would you say, Deneen, to someone who may have an idea or dream, but, you know, they they uh, scared or afraid to put that plan in motion? Any words of encouragement? Certainly. I would say a person that has an idea of or a dream, I would say first, wrap it in prayer. That means take everything you do to God. And I believe that in the right time and the right season that he'll open up those doors. Like I said, he gave me this over 11 years ago and I started it, but it didn't really like kick off like it's doing now. So I think time is of essence. And then I would say that um, don't be afraid because God did not give us the spirit of fear. Uh, Know when to go forth and know how to be in tune 
and in tune with God, meaning in tune with when go forth, because He speaks to us in a still mouth, um, a still voice, and if we listen, we can hear. And so, I would encourage anybody that if they um, would only step out on faith, that they too can accomplish whatever dreams and goals. And do you guys know? Um, I've been doing some research on a lot of young girls. They have a lot of entrepreneur that are under the age of 12. Yeah. Uh, they, just had, mm-hmm, they just had a big uh, convention in a DC area uh, just this past weekend. And it was so phenomenal. It was like 100 little girls that yeah. have written books that have started their own businesses. And so those are the kind of uh, people that my group is linking up with so that when the daughters come through my uh, empowerment program, I can kind of like be a liaison for them to reach that next dispensation that they're going into. Mm. Great. So um, how is that number that you gave us? Can people... Um, call that number also to if they wanted to get their hair done, make an appointment for that. <laughs> yeah, I might need my locks did or some girl. No. <laughs> okay. So well, I I own my I work like I do. I spread myself sort of thin, so I only work on a few days. But uh, yeah, they can they can also reach out to me if that's want to do, or uh, they can go to my visibly sheet, which is my hair page. Um, mm-hmm. on Instagram or Facebook. So they can they can reach out to me during um on those social media platforms. You got an email? You all heard it first here. You, you can call her to get your hair done. You can call her <laughs> your little girls up for charm school. <laughs> you, know, you do it all if you need a, a motivational speaker, a good word. Evangelist. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh Amen. Gosh. That's right. That's right. It was such a pleasure being here with you guys. Yeah, you guys like are doing you. a phenomenal job. You guys keep going strong and, you know, get some good people in here. It was totally an honor to be here to, you know, share some light on Michelle Obama's book. She's right. an awesome lady. I would advise everybody to get her book because she has some really good content in there. She also talked about when she uh, met Barack and she also talked about um, her time do, being the first lady of the United yeah. States right. and what it was like living in the White House. And she talked about her daughters, um, Sasha and Malaya. So it's some really, really, really good content in the book. And I would advise people to get out there and get the book. And she is another inspirational person that's doing phenomenal things for uh, young girls. Mm. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, thank you for coming. Uh, re- appreciate it, and uh, you know we'll have you again next time. And thank you for for coming. Okay. And, and, and go get that book, becoming Michelle. <laughs> All right, take care. Okay. Thanks. Bye. See you. All right. We got one more song from the artist of the day, Shell. But before y'all check that out. Check out her website, www.shellmusic.com. That's C-H-E-L-E music.com. Straight out of Columbus, Ohio. Hitting you with another banger. Dreaming by Shell. Yep.
congratulations once again to Shell. Man, that was a banger. So if y'all want to follow her or subscribe to her um, music and purchase her music, go ahead and hit her up on the website, www.shellmusic.com. That's shellmusic.com, C-H-E-L-E music.com. Attention, attention, calling all artists, calling all artists. If you want to be heard on my show, go ahead and submit an MP3 format to my email, giannistyles at gmail.com. That's giannistyles at gmail.com, G-I-A-N-N-I-S-T-Y-L-E-Z at gmail.com. And stay tuned for the next episode of The Kickback. Yep.